So this evening I'm here with Andy Martell in his shop and uh, we're going to be kind of discussing what he does to create these decoys that he makes um, and we're also going to be talking about this individual piece, uh, Popeye, who's going to be traveling the state of Virginia this year. I did an introductory piece on him and kind of just discussing the story behind some of these decoys and how exactly uh, they get made. So if you kind of want to talk about the process of Popeye and what yeah, prompted man, you to um, make them. Thanks Thomas. I, I, I'm honored to have you guys out here tonight. Um, and pretty blessed to be able to be a big part of this. Um, this the idea for traveling decoys isn't new. Um, I've already been a part of a, a very special traveling decoy this year, Boone from Duck South. Um, I got to take him to Canada. Um, I got to uh, bring him down to Hampton where I'm a firefighter. Um, and I got to tell the story of uh, Brad Clark, who unfortunately lost his life um, on duty uh, here in Hanover County. Um, so. Uh, that traveling decoy got to be a part of something a little bit bigger. Um, but that same sort of fellowship and that same sort of story prompted me to make one uh, for the state of Virginia. Um, duck hunting these days has become a little bit contentious. Uh, a lot of people are at each other's throats. And um, I've been blessed to have been duck hunting for, this is gonna be my 23rd season. And um, honestly, it was something that Brad Clark said that sort of prompted me to decide to do a traveling decoy. Uh, Brad Clark, uh, speaking about firefighting, said, you know, if your rookies are acting a little bit gaudy and they're acting um, like they know it all and, um, and you're starting to complain about your rookies not knowing anything, if you really want to know the problem, all you need to do is look in the mirror. Um, and that kind of got me thinking about duck hunting too. Um, a lot of people are complaining about what we call top waters or, and uh, unfortunately a lot of people blame Duck Dynasty, which I think is completely false because all the Robertson clan wanted to do was preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. And um, I kind of thought to myself, you know, um, I've been duck hunting a long time, and I've got, you know, I, I absolutely have a lot to learn, but I also have a lot to share that I can pass on to, um, you know, some new generations. And not only that, I can also meet a lot of other people in this state that think the same way that I do and enjoy the same things that I do. Um, and I thought this decoy would be a great way to do that. I um, mean, it would be a great story uh, to pass along um, and hear lots of different stories and lots of different experiences. And that's really what duck hunting is all about, is the uh, experiences that we have and the friendships that we make. Um, this body itself is, um, is foam that I made, or I didn't make the foam, I carved the foam um, out of a laminated uh, piece of foam insulation. And uh, what's cool about this decoy is this is a decoy that anybody can make at home out of relatively basic things that you can buy at any hardware store. Um, I've got some pink foam up here. Um, this foam comes, uh, you can buy it at Home Depot. Uh, Home Depot, it's pink, it lows, it's blue. Um, it's about 30 bucks a sheet. It's an inch and a half thick by four feet by eight feet. Um, you can cut it with a hacksaw blade. You don't need any power tools to cut it. Um, all you need is a, a basic outline, and the outline that I used uh, for Popeye, and uh, and actually also this mallard over here, which I'm going to grab really quick because this is Mal, uh, Popeye's uh, kind of predecessor. Um, this was the one that I made as a twin for Popeye that I keep for myself. Um, all I did was I took a uh, an Avery decoy and kind of looked at it, sat down on a piece of cardboard with a pencil and traced it, and I did that about 10 years ago. Um, at the time, uh, I had kind of fallen on some hard times personally. Uh, I had some personal stuff going on emotionally and financially just in life. I was young. I was about 23, 24 years old trying to find my way in the world. And I found that carbon decoys uh, was extremely therapeutic for me personally. I really enjoyed doing it. I would sit, I still lived with my parents at the time, and I would uh, sit in my daddy's garage and I would, you know, draw these little forms out and I would cut them out with a jigsaw and uh, glue them together with Gorilla Glue and just take a wood rasp, which you can buy these, these wood rasps. The ones that I use, I actually bought at Harbor Freight. You can buy a three pack for $2.97. Um, and you can make this body that I made on either one of these in less than five minutes. Um, basically, the only thing that you need to remember is that nothing on a duck is flat. Uh, think of it like a football, everything is round. And uh, you can see on this, on this canvas back that I made, um, that it, a football was kind of my inspiration. Um, and David Shores, as much as, as he and I love to argue on Facebook, I actually love the guy. And I used his uncle's patterns, or I'm not sure, it, it might be his uncle, it might be his great uncle's patterns. Um, basically, I bought a book off of uh, Amazon, 
that was written by one of his relatives and used that pattern to make this decoy. And this decoy is probably going to be the 2019-2020 traveling decoy for Virginia duck hunters. Um, but it's probably going to be in my spread first, <laughs> just because I'm selfish like that. Um, but long story short, I'm, I haven't had any formal schooling in this. This is just something that I picked up and just kind of started messing with. Mm -hmm. And I haven't made that many decoys myself. I do a lot of flocking and a lot of painting. And there's a group on Facebook called Decoy Flockers, uh, which is bar none the best Facebook group that I've ever been a part of. Um, I owe very much of what I know about airbrushing and painting uh, to a couple of guys, Don Mintz, who is the godfather of decoy flocking and painting, uh, who I followed back when I was in college in the early 2000s. He was making decoys the same way out of uh, layered, uh, you know, laminated foam uh, that you buy at the hardware store and then flocking it and painting it. And he did some amazing work. Uh, he did a lot of work with, uh, with Tangle Free um, in the Master Series. And he's still one of the best airbrushers and, and best uh, foam decoy makers that I've ever, ever seen in my life. Um, there's a man named Bill Scapelja who I have pestered absolutely to death, who I owe a lot to. Um, he, and that's assuming that I'm saying his name right. He has quite a uh, complicated name to say, but uh, he's down in Florida. He makes some absolutely amazing decoys. Um, Hunter Lubier, another name that I probably screwed up, uh, is currently in CRNA school, and I wish him nothing but the best. But he did a lot with that group, um, made a lot of demos, took time to answer questions. And that's really what this is all about. Um, because the more that you involve yourself with waterfowling, the more you get back out of it. So for me, um, I'm a medic firefighter and uh, I work, a, believe it or not, even though everybody thinks we have a lot of time off, I actually work 56 hours a week. Um, it's, it's not all chicks in danger. There's a lot of things that we do that are just very tedious and very stressful. Um, yes, we see some really bad things and we also do some really good things, but a lot of it is very uh, monotonous and very repetitive. So um, for me, come, being able to come home and sit down in here in my shop in my garage and make decoys is a absolutely amazing form, form of therapy for me. Um, so I started a small business called Two Rivers Counterfeits where I actually take old plastic decoys and, and turn them into, uh, into new flock decoys. I can take a, a, a basic block that's been beat up and there's bird crap all over this one. And, uh, and flock it and airbrush it and turn it into something that, uh, that looks pretty spectacular. And, uh, and this is one of the early ones I did, so this one's actually probably not to my standard now. But uh, what I do now is uh, it's a little bit higher grade, but I've got some pintails in here. I'm getting ready to start off for some of the best friends. And, uh, and I just really enjoy doing it. Um, it's, you know, it's nothing that you can't do at home. Um, I'm, I'm just a regular, regular dude that enjoys waterfowl hunting. And uh, there's nothing more satisfying than uh, seeing a, a couple of ducks lock up over your own decoys. Um, Popeye is uh, hunted with me uh, right here in eastern Virginia. Um, I killed my first blue winged teal over him, something that we don't see a whole lot of in Virginia. Um, I killed my first blue winged teal this year, um, and, and that was the first hunt that Popeye was ever on. And um, I hadn't even painted him yet. I'd, uh, I'd flocked him, but I hadn't painted him. Uh, the first hunts he went on with, uh, with me and Josh Lutcher and Blaine Martz, and, I, and Scooter Coger, we, uh, we, we had, a, had a great hunt um, out in Amelia County. Uh, we, we shot a bunch of geese, killed a couple of pigeons, and he was still primer gray. Um, so uh, Popeye has been a, uh, a good luck charm for us. Um, his head uh, was made by a company called Dixie Decoys, who I've definitely got a plug. Um, and Dixie, I found that Dixie Decoys kind of has the same line of thinking that I have. Uh, they really enjoy people who enjoy doing it themselves. Uh, they're very much DIY. Uh, they encourage people to make their own decoys and they make simple decoys. Um, you know, there's no eyes on, on Popeye or on his counterpart, um, the Mallard who, who doesn't really have a name. I'm sure my wife will think something up. Um, the name Popeye actually came from my wife who used to have a pet duck when she was a little girl named Popeye. And uh, well, I was sitting there thinking one night, you know, drinking bourbon like I usually do next to the fire. And I was like, we need to name this thing. And she's like, we're going to name it Popeye. And I was like, all right, great, perfect, sold. And uh, that's how he got his name. Um, he's made the, the wood keel. You can kind of see on the bottom here what I did with Popeye was uh, I took that, that foam and, uh, and layered it together. And then I, I took burlap and tile mastic. And uh, Tony Homer has a great video on YouTube 
about how to do that uh, with, with, with burlapping. Um, you can do Russell coating as well, which is using uh, walnut shell and type bond three. And make sure you use type bond three. And there again, Tony Homer's got a bunch of videos on that that are really great. Um, he's he's a, a pretty good resource too. Um, and you can make these decoys yourself. Uh, I do airbrush them, uh, and airbrushing is, I don't want to say it's the hardest part, but it is definitely an acquired skill. You've got to sit down and take your time and learn how to do it. Um, but all I did was I just took a good hard look at a black duck, and um, at first what I did in order to kind of get my feet under me was I went to my little boy, I've got a, a six-year-old son, and uh, one Christmas he got these twister crayons, and uh, it's white, and I can take this and I can actually draw it right over the dark colored flocking and I could outlay the layers of feathers how I wanted them how I wanted them painted on and uh, and that kind of allowed me to cheat a little bit when I came about and uh, and sprayed the the highlights of the feathers um, so there are little tricks and tips and a lot of that is on the decoy flockers page if uh, if you want to go check them out I'm an admin there and I'm absolutely honored to be um, as as good as I think Popeye looks, there are guys on decoy flockers that make me look like a kid finger painting. Uh, Trey Bryan uh, does the absolute best black duck I've ever seen in my life, and my hat's off to you, sir. Uh, he is, uh, I actually made one of his black ducks, the, uh, the group photo. He's down in South Carolina. Um, there are several guys there that, any species of duck that you can imagine, there's somebody in there who is a absolute master at it. Um, there are guys who strictly make their own decoys. There are guys who take plastic decoys like I do a lot of and flock them. And they can take an old junk decoy that is almost ready for the trash heap that all the paint's falling off of and turn it into something that anybody would be proud to hunt over. Um, uh, I, I myself, I do mallards, I do gadwalls. Um, I do a lot of black ducks, um, canvasbacks. Uh, Bluebills, redheads, a lot of Canada geese. Um, Jeff Killian is the master of Canada geese. Anybody that's in Ohio, you'd be a fool not to get your geese redone by him. Uh, he is a master painter and does it for a living. Um, but I'm, I'm very, uh, very honored to be able to pass Popeye around the state of Virginia this year. Uh, we're really looking forward to it. Looking forward to some great stories and some great hunts. And uh, I hope that uh, all you guys will continue following Thomas, who does a great job with Virginia Outdoors Unlimited. Um, he, he is as real as it gets. There is no filter. There is no BS. There is no pretentiousness. It is as real as hunting is. Uh, he hunts the way that 99% of people do. Uh, so it's, um, it's how the world really goes. Um, I hope you guys will, uh, will check out my page and check out his. And, uh, and also check out the decoy flockers page because there's a whole lot to learn if uh, you're into doing your own decoys. And yeah, thank you, Andy, for having us out here. It's absolutely, absolutely a pleasure, buddy. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> I really only have one question. What point in your waterfowling career, I guess is what I'd call it, did you kind of discover the joy that comes from shooting ducks over your injuries? Because was, was there one specific experience? Well, when I was uh, when I was young, the first decoys that I had, which I still have. Mm -hmm. um, my dad gave me eight decoys early on, and they they were, I think they were sport plasts and flambeaux that were made back in the 70s. And uh, I started touching them up, um, you know, with just, you know, 89 cent, you know, uh, Walmart acrylic mm -hmm. paints. And, you know, the paint would last three or four weeks. And I had to constantly touch them up. But I was convinced that by making the whites a little bit whiter and the greens a little bit greener and the yellow on the bill a little bit brighter and the, the you know, the, it would actually do something. Mm -hmm. And it didn't, but you know, not those particular highlights. You know, I've learned that now based on how, you know, ducks actually see and how ducks actually work. Um, but back then, when I, when I got birds to decoy just right over the birds that I had painted, I was like, man, you know, it was, I, it enhanced the entire experience for me. Um, and I started tying my own flies about that time, and it did the same thing. You know, any time that I caught a bluegill on a popper that I had actually tied, I was like, man, I was a bigger part of that. And uh, as I got more and more into it, um, once I started flocking my own birds, which was really only about three or four years ago, um, we, uh, we took a trip to Arkansas, and everybody was saying that you know it was, it was dead, the birds were stale, nobody, nobody was killing anything. And we went out the first morning, 
and we killed three or four over my buddy's decoys. And, um, you know, we were in a hole where we had to bust ice and we were trying to stand in there. And I said, you know, guys, let's, let's think about this a minute. And, um, we, uh, we backed up and, and I brought my spread the next day and I had about three dozen of my own flock decoys and, and they are very rudimentary compared to what I can put out now. But, um, we, uh, we went up the slough and we found a place where some coots were feeding and there was a little bit of open water and I put those birds out and there were people hunting all around us and we killed a 10 man limit of ducks in less than two hours over my flock decoys. And that's when that light really came on and I was hooked and I said, this is one of the best hunts I've ever been on. Um, I, I felt completely fulfilled that I, I was a huge part of that hunt because I, all those hours that I invested in the off season, which I enjoyed, uh, it was therapeutic the entire time. You know, I was just you know, doing what I enjoyed doing, you know, creating something. Um, I guess you could, I guess the modern buzz term is upcycling because I was taking something that was ready to go in the trash heap and uh, flocking it and making something out of it um, and, and turned it into something that I could be proud to hunt over that worked better than anything else that was being put out commercially. I was really, really pleased with myself. And uh, that was when that light really came on, that, uh, that I was kind of onto something. And, and I've heard several other people that have flock, that flock their own decoys say the same thing, that they make a lot of difference and that if they didn't, you know, they wouldn't go to all the trouble because it takes several hours to do them. Um, you know, they're, they're all double coated. Uh, the airbrushing, which looks like the most complex part, is actually the fastest part. Um, but the, uh, the coating and uh, making sure that they don't clump and, and sifting all the, the flocking out. And uh, you can see my respirator hanging up here. Um, you know, Lord knows uh, we can, we're probably going to make some videos on some how to videos on how to flock coming up in the future uh, for, for people to see uh, for the benefit of the decoy flockers group. But, uh, wear wear a respirator you only get two sets of lungs that respirator right there costs 30 bucks and even if you've got insurance that's cheaper than a copay and mm -hmm. patient first for an upper respiratory infection wear a respirator not an n95 wear a full-blown respirator it it is worth it that nylon flocking that we use is highly toxic so uh, make sure that you you take good care of yourself um, but these uh these decoys are anything that you can do yourself right at home um, and if, uh, if you have any questions, I'm Andy Martell. I'm on Facebook as Andy Martell doing business as Two Rivers Counterfeits. Send me a message. I'm happy to answer any questions you have. The Decoy Flockers Group's a great resource. Virginia Duck Hunters is a great resource too. So, uh, thank you for having me again, Thomas. I yeah. really appreciate it. Yeah, I hope everybody enjoyed this. Like Andy said, if you guys have any questions, either, uh, send them to him. If you guys put them in the comments, I can always send them to him. Um, but again, this is, you know. This is great work he does. I mean, it'd be a shame not to call it art, almost. Um, it is art. And uh, if you guys ever want decoys redone, decoys made, make sure to uh, give his page a look because he does absolutely great work. So hope you guys enjoyed this video, and thanks for watching.